Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Now that's a good little few verses of Scripture there that's just really good. Now I want to go back to verse 3 and I want to walk through this for just a moment. And let's kind of look a little deeper into these particular passages of Scripture. Trust in the Lord and do good. Okay, well, when we're starting off here, uh, I want you to notice that we start off in verse 3 with what I like to call qualifiers. We oftentimes like to go to verses of Scripture in our Bible, and we like to use one portion of a verse of Scripture. And oftentimes, that verse of Scripture has a qualifier in there somewhere. Uh, one of the best ones, have I mentioned to y'all, have I, have I taught on John 10.10 10 lately? I, I think we mention it every service, don't we? John 10.10 10 is an awesome verse of Scripture that has, there's a lot of layers to that onion in John 10.10. 10. The last half of John 10.10 10 says, but I, that's Jesus, it's written in red in your Bible, He's the one doing the talking. But I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And that life that He's talking about is the Zoe life of God. That is the life of God in every area of your life. Uh, that, that, that's true uh, uh, where your mind is concerned, where your body is concerned, spirit is concerned where your finances are concerned, where your, your mental health is concerned, where everything in your life, Jesus said, I've come to give you life till it overflows. Now, I mean, that's, that's yeah, yeah, the amen, in case you were wondering where the amen went, it went right there, okay? All right, that's, he came to do that, to give us life till it overflows in every area of our life. He's given us richly all things to enjoy, all things that pertain to life and godliness. God is not withholding any good thing from us. Can I share something with you, and I'm glad you're sitting down from this. God doesn't have anything else to give you. <gasps> oh, Now that'll get you kicked out of a lot of good churches right there. God does not have anything else to give you. And the reason that I say that is because He has not withheld anything from you. He has sent forth... Every, matter of fact, angels. Angels are ministering spirits sent forth for them or to them who are heirs of salvation. Well, are we heirs of salvation? Yes. Have the angels been sent forth? Yes. Who have they been sent forth to? To us. So you have at your disposal the Word of God that's in our hearts and comes out of our mouth that the Bible says is a quick and mighty sword. We are clothed in the armor of God for protection. We have been given His Spirit. Listen, when, when, you, when you relate the Spirit of God to the church, it'll help you if you think power. Now, the Spirit of God leads us. The, the, the Spirit of God reveals things to us. But one of the, listen, in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the, and the earth was out form and void, dark form and face of the deep, and the Spirit of God began to move on the waters. Do you realize that in verse 2 it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, I'm not going to get into this because I've got an eight-week series on this. But when you find the earth in Genesis 1-2, there was something that was already here. And... Verse 2 describes to you the state that it's in. It is dark, and it's covered in water. Right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Bang. That's the creation of the universe. 13.8 billion years ago, approximately. 
Then verse 2 tells, now then we're starting to describe this planet. And the earth was without form and void. That means, that we well, have used that expression before, tohu babohu. That expression means through a cataclysmic, catastrophic sequence of events, it has spiraled away into utter chaos. That's what that phrase means in the Hebrew. It's only used three times in the Bible. So the earth has become without form and void. Darkness is upon the face of the deep. So it's dark and covered in water. If it's dark and the energy of the sun is not on the earth, then that water is in what state? Ice. Y'all ever heard of Ice Age? Just a thought. And the Spirit of God began to move. So to, to put things out of that chaos and to restructure it and put it back in the way that God had created, the Spirit of God began to move and put all that back. The power of God began to move on the earth and separate water and land. And, and, and we know that stuff was already here because when uh, on the sixth day when he called forth, it says he called forth the herbs in every uh, uh, fruit-bearing tree. It, the seeds were already here. He, he didn't create them. They were already in the earth. He just commanded them to come back forth. They had already been here. I'm stopping, okay? I'm, I'm, I, I can feel my stuff slipping to get off into that. That's not what I'm teaching on today. My point is that the Spirit of God, the power of the living God, has been given to the church on the day of Pentecost. You know that power that, that uh, Luke is talking about over in Acts chapter 10 when he's describing Peter going to Cornelius' house in Acts 10, 38, and, and Peter's preaching, and he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. On the day of Pentecost... How God anointed the church with the Holy Ghost and power so we could go about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for God is with us. And the amen goes right there. We are not some sniveling, weak, reprobate, hiding in a hole, waiting for Jesus to come back and save us before this world goes to hell in a handbasket. We are the body of Christ, the arming of the living God, His ambassadors on the earth, and we need to start acting like it. Amen?